Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. I'm going to talk you through a two-way between ANOVA. Here we have an experiment where the survival time of um, animals is measured after they've been given a poison, of which there are three types, and then they were given some kind of antidote, of which there are four types. This is two factor ANOVA because we have two factors here we're looking at treatment which there are four levels and type of and poison of which there are three levels. The measurement here is survival time so the dependent variable is the survival time measured in maybe um, what could it be measured in? It doesn't actually say it could be measured in um, hours. Anyway the thing is that the con dependent variable is continuous Right. Now, what we can see is that there are a total of 12 combinations conditions because, for example, we have A treatment, to, uh, we have kind of poison 1, given treatment A, poison 1, treatment B, poison 1, treatment C, and so on. So, in other words, that's a combination, that's a combination, that's a combination. So, you can see all together they're going to be 12 combinations of treatment and poison. In other words, 12 conditions. This is a between as opposed to repeated measures or mixed design because each animal here experiences only one combination of treatment and poison because obviously, you know, if you've experienced this one treatment type of poison and the treatment, you're only going to survive X amount of time and then that's it, so you're not going to be able to repeat the experiment again. So for that reason, this between each animal only experiences one combination of poison and treatment. Other thing we note is when we're dealing with these experimental designs is, is it balanced or unbalanced design? This is a balanced design because for each combination of treatment and poison, you have the same number of measurements, so the same number of animals taking that combination. Uh, what is that uh, number? One, two, three, it's four. Each time there are four. For example, treatment A, poison one, there are four. Um, treatment C, type two, there are four. So every single combination there are four measurements. So this makes it a balanced design, which you know is uh, desirable in terms of, um, in terms of uh, conditions that uh, ANOVA has to satisfy. Okay, so here's the data in long form, because we're going to use the AOV command. So we have the measurements in one column and the factors in the other two columns. If your data is not in long form, I've shown you in the previous video how to put it into long form. Also, in another video, I've described to you, if you've only got the measurements, how you can create the factors to go alongside that of the measurement. Okay, first ANOVA, we need to see whether some of the conditions are satisfied. We can get an idea of where it's satisfied by looking at the box plot. Okay, notice there are, if you count them, 12 box plots because there are 12 combinations. So here is, um, so here we go, here 1A, that is poison 1 treatment A, and that's the box plot for that, treatment uh, a for poison 2 and so on. What we're looking for here is within each group do they appear to be normally distributed and um, are the variances the same? You see the width of the plots here. Uh, look at this one. This is much narrower than all the other ones. So the variance is probably not the same. But because it's a balanced design, the F-test is robust. So that's what, why uh, this a balanced design is desirable. How about normal distribution? Well, that looks pretty normal. Um, this may be slightly skewed. It's not. This could be slightly skewed. But again, uh, with a balanced design, the F-test is robust. The type of questions we ask with an ano with an ANOVA analysis is is there a difference in the mean survival time for 
say treatment is the difference between the mean survival time between the levels of the treatment irrespective of poison uh, can I say it another way? Um, does it matter if I put in real layman's terms? Does it matter which uh, treatment? Does, is there a difference between the treatments? I, can we say one treatment is better than the others? And that will be irrespective then of the type of poison. Similarly, we can ask the same for poison. Does the is the difference in the po uh, poisons on the survival time? And that's irrespective of treatments. Now that kind of question that I've just put there, those two questions about differences between the levels of the levels of the factor irrespective of the levels of the other factor, they are called main effects. So we can talk about the main effects of treatment, that is, is there a difference between the levels of treatment on the survival time? And we can talk about the main effect of poison. Is there a difference of the levels uh, of the okay levels of poison on the survival time, irrespective of treatment? Then we can talk about the combination effect. Is there comp is there a kind of difference when you have different levels? Is there a kind of a relation between different types of levels of treatment and the levels of poison? That is called interaction effect. When I introduce the interaction effect, I say to my students, you know, you take a drug A, just a drug A, maybe for hay fever, it's got a certain effect over you. Then you take a drug B, I don't know, you might alcohol or something that's got an effect on you but when you take the two combined then the combination of those two drugs may have some other possible effect and that is called interaction so it's like that's why it's called interaction I guess let's first of all look at the plots the plots to go over the main effects and interaction effects okay here's the main effect plot what does it show us? It shows us on the y-axis the dependent variable and on the x-axis the f factors. So what we've got here is for treatment uh, which is one factor and then poison that's another factor. And the treatment at uh, level A the mean time of survival is Oh, just over 0.3, C is higher, nearly 0.4, D is between 0.5 and 0.6, B is higher. In other words, if we just look at treatment by itself, which treatment do you think is best in terms of um, mean survival time? B, because that gives you the highest one. All right. So B is better than D, better than C, better than A. A is the worst. Ir and this is saying irrespective of the poison. Likewise for the poison here, which one is most potent? It seems like 3 is, because if you take 3, the mean time of survival is lower than for the other two. This horizontal line here is the overall mean, so it's the mean of across all observations, across all combinations. In other words, it's the mean of all the numbers here. It would be nice to know what these numbers actually are, and we can do find that using the t table apply command. So of the of the measurement, and I want to list by treatment the mean value. So here you go. So we've now we've got the values. The mean for treatment A, the mean survival is 0.31. There you go. 0.31 can actually tell what it is now. C, uh, that is 0.392. B, which is the highest, is, I mean, let's say D, the next one is 0.53, and the highest is B, which is, gives you about, means of other time, 0.68. We can do the same for poison. Okay, so we can see that the same for poison. The most potent poison is level 3, gives you a means of other time of only 0.27, 0.28, say hours. Right, so that's the main effects plot. Next, and this is how it's diff this is different.